Hi hi hello. Hi hi hello. This thing's so weird. I just been farting. Hey hi hello. This is a vlog. But first, a word from our sponsor. Shout out to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company and they have options for every lifestyle. Keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Um, this arrived at the perfect time because it was Thursday and I was tired of cooking for the week. And this is just one of the many reasons Green Chef is amazing because doorstep delivery allows you to skip the grocery store while pre-portioned ingredients and pre-made sauces make cooking a snap on busy weeknights. And y'all know that I be getting off work and I am tired and I don't wanna do nothing. So not having to think about what I'm cooking for dinner is amazing. Green Chef makes cooking easy so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home cooked meals. <laughs> Amen. They have organic protein and wild caught seafood options and there are delicious choices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner that fit your health lifestyle. Hallelujah. <laughs> And they have a new protein packed meal preference, a new collection of recipes fit for high protein dietary preferences with menu items, each containing an average of 40 grams of protein per serving. So the first meal I made, um, I planned on recording it, but then we got real hungry. So I had to make that really fast and I didn't set up. <laughs> um, so you're not going to see that, but it was delicious. They're so easy to prepare. Literally all the ingredients you need are in the bag and they have step-by-step -step instructions with photos to walk you through the preparation. Now, I love me a photo chat because that just makes it so much easier. Now, don't come for me for my pronunciation, but this was a beef kava toppy <laughs> skillet. Um, it's the kava toppy, I think, is referencing the type of noodle, type of pasta. Um, I love pasta in most forms, so I knew I was gonna be down with this, but again, this was so simple to cook. All the ingredients came except like salt, pepper, and water because you should have those things but um it was super quick like i think it said 30 35 minutes to prepare on the sheet and that's literally what it took which i respect because i do not like to start something and it takes more time than i initially thought especially when you hungry like i'm always hungry so for you beautiful people i have a code it's jess owens six zero so just oh and 64 wait for this 60 percent off and free shipping <laughs> what go to greenshelf.com for more details i'll also have things listed down in the description but did you hear what i said just owen 60 for 60 percent off and free shipping i think it's definitely worth it to give it a try if you wanted to prepare more homemade meals this year as part of like a New Year's resolution or just a new goal, Green Chef can definitely help you do that. You can bring more flavor to your table with Green Chef's delicious, nutritious recipes. I mean, what are you waiting for? You can be spicing up your life with Green Chef. They have unexpected veggie forward flavor combinations, unique farm fresh ingredients. So I think you should give it a try and use code JessOwen60 to save yourself 60% and to get free shipping. Thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. I like these little noodles. Yeah. The it's table. Like extra elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Like the little noodle thing. No, I think they call something else. The tennis elbows. <laughs> I'm reading House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I'm going to update you. So. Okay. Girl, Scott, please. Um. So I saw this book, right? I'm like, I can't keep up with these people. And there was one line. I saved it in my Kindle. I'll have to tell you. It was so dumb. 
I mean, there are a lot of dumb lines, but this one I was like, what? I just am reading it like, this is not well written. <laughs> I'm like, maybe 5%. So it's very, very early, but it's very, very early. So I'll just stop right there. Good morning. This is what I look like. Ignore. Um, so I got to like 15% in Krusty City last night. And I want to tell you about it. My thoughts so far as I get ready for the day or until my battery dies, whichever happens first. Wait, I washed my face last night. I don't wash my face in the morning if I wash my face at night. So I'm just gonna uh, wipe the crust up last. You know what, I'm not gonna talk to y'all like this. I'm gonna keep looking like this, okay? So for the first 15% of Crescent City, I'm mean very much like, Okay, there are so many gosh darn creatures like G bus Sarah, where you just bored and were like, let me Google all uh, fantastical or like supernatural beings there are, and let me throw it in this book. Also, all of the things, cause you know, this is supposed to be an urban fantasy. But I just feel so like, it's like an urban fantasy, but also in a made up urban city that I can't place. Like I don't feel like I've got a good grasp on where we are. I'm not, it's not grounding me in my mind. And I hate that. And then all the things like Crescent City University, so like CCU, it makes me think of Coastal Carolina University. I'm sorry. It's just like, hold on, something's in my eye, hold on. Shit, shit, hold on. I'm not wasting that damn vitamin C, let me tell you what. I don't know, I just don't feel sold. Like I don't feel connected to this world yet. And right now it's 15%. Bryce and her passion for dance. And her passion for dance get on my nerves, okay? Like, already, the narrator, because I'm listening to the audio, but also following along with the audio book. No, <clears throat> with the ebook. Hate it. Like, especially the voice for Danica. And these names. Nigel. I don't know what my dog did. These names are, are atrocious. The Akatar and Throne of Glass names, way better. These names are terrible. Bryce is fine, whatever, but like, the name for, why is hell spelled H-E-L? Do you think you're inventing something new? H-E-L, and then uh, Hunt, Rune, what? I hate it. I just honestly, the names are terrible. And there are other ones I can't think of right now. But so far, I am the very underwhelmed. Um, I'm trying to do this and also, what do I need for my face? I just am like, yeah. Obviously now, spoiler alert, we kind of have a murder mystery on our hands trying to figure out what happened to these wolves. Um, so we'll see. But I'm just like, God dang, every every other page there's some new a shifter, a lion, a, a demon thing, a wolf, a vampire, like God damn. And I know it's not unusual for stories that have multiple supernatural creatures. I'm just saying, this book feel like it got all of them. And in the beginning of the book, it lists like four houses. So House of Sky and Breath, House of Earth and Blood, and there's two other ones. I'm like, is this gonna be a quartet? Ugh, please. It didn't need, it needed, it didn't even need to be one book, let's be real. But, I don't know. 
It's a chunky book. There's still lots to go. So we'll see. I do not think that I'm going to be drastically impressed with this story. Like, let's, I'm going to be honest here. Um, but I'm reading it. And so when I read today, I'm going to, um, well, I can't, until, if I read on breaks, it'll just be normal. But when I read tonight, I'm going to have me a little adult beverage, you know what I mean, and see if maybe that improves my reading experience, okay? So, sunscreen, and then we're done. And then I'm going to go have, make myself a nice coffee. I said I wasn't going to talk to y'all like this, and here I am talking to her. Don't put your sunscreen on like this. You're supposed to do the fingers, but you know what? I don't want to do Okay? Don't be like me, but I hope y'all are using your sunscreen. Very important. Just so, what are you gonna do with your hair? I work, I work from home. I don't, my camera's not on. Now, tonight, I do need to like brush it out and put some oil in it, then I gotta twist it up. But for right now, this is me. Okay? All right, well, I will see y'all later when I read a little more. Okay, inquiring minds want to know. Hunt peeled off the helmet and braced his hands on the sink. In the harsh bathroom first lights, his light brown skin was pallid under the black band of thorns across his brown. So is he mixed? Is he light skin black? Is he a tanned white? What's going on? You know, that's Andrew and Nigel. I appreciate not using olive because I don't know what that is. But what you mean by light brown? I need to know. I know he ain't Blake, but what you mean? Let's, what, what's going on? Why? Okay, Rune Dannon makes me think of Dan and Yogurt. Hunt Athelar, these names are terrible. And they're angels with their wings. Are they not just Illyrian warriors? Sarah, Sarah. Sarah, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm 20% in and I'm just like, okay, Bryce has got to find this killer because Bryce has so many talents, like the talent for dance and walking in high heels. So De Bryce definitely seems like the person who should be hunting down a serial killer. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. This is quality writing. Nigel is bored of the story. And honestly, I am too. I'd rather be watching SVU. Oh, bars! I mean, <laughs> that rhymed. As the young kids on TikTok would say, I need Sarah... I need Sarah Janney to be so fucking for real. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Find the horn, Rune. <laughs> if war comes to these shores, our people will need it in more ways than one. I just keep envisioning Throne of Glass. But like with worse people and worse names. Lucera, this 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 is not this is not no marvel verse okay cinematic this is not a cinematic universe this is a you writing the same book again but you try to make it urban and it's not giving i have a headache his vision surrounding the scene glinting with starlight 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 Again, I just keep thinking of Throne of Glass and Akatar. Again, I keep thinking of Throne of Glass and Akatar. Guten Morgen. It is Saturday. I'm 34% in this book and I feel like this lighting is not doing me any favors. I feel like 
from what I've heard about this book, I think Bryce and Hunt are supposed to be a thing. And, uh, you know, they're very, like, to each other. Like, oh, fuck you, fuck you. I don't want to have to work with you, but I do. Um, none of that is giving me the tension that I seek. None of it is giving, you know, like, what is it? Is it just tension? Is that the word? Tension? I'm feeling nothing. No friction, no chemistry, no like, ooh, restrained. I just feel like they're two annoyed people working with each other. So the setup for this, if these are the, the names I'm remembering correctly, if these two are supposed to be a thing, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. But my back hurts, so I need to have some medicine. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm just like there's another murder and I'm like okay who did it I'm just very underwhelmed like at least I don't know at least Avatar like I would just rather reread A Court of Silver Flames and you know how I feel about that book and Nesta but this is just I think it's because I can't like envision the world really because it's supposed to be an urban landscape. Like one of these lines, she's talking about Mr. Hunt with his wings flying up to a rooftop with his with his phone on his ear. I can't I can't put them two together. It's not It's giving nothing. It's giving I was half asleep when I wrote this, but I knew that Bloomsbury would publish it. Anyway, let me get back to this damn book, child. I need to finish it this weekend so I can be I can be free of Coogee down to the Sock City. Do you like my Squishmallow? So, I'm on 40%. Look what's going on. Or how I got this many more pages to go. I'm so bored. Like, the best part of this experience is eating snacks. And coming up with different words to call Christmas City. Like Crunchwrap City. Caesar's Palace. Croissant City. I'll couple them with some more. Terrible angle, hard usual. But look, here's a baby. Okay, I think I think I got to the part where Sarah really was like, mm, "I did that." So what's his name? Rune? No, Hunt. Hunt Athalar. I just think of Hunt's spaghetti sauce. He said, "How many males would run from this part of her? Their alpha hole egos threatened by it." Hunt hated them all merely for putting the question in her eyes. Oh my God. So this is after she, they're at like a shooting range and she just shot like three shots basically through the same thing. And he, no. And so he didn't hear Rune asking him something as he lined up his shot. No. Hunt only met Bryce's stare as he clicked off the state safety. So was he looking at the gun or not? That sounds like improper gun handling. Hunt pulled his, wait, that click reverberated between them loud as a thunderclap <laughs> her throat bobbed what's that mean <laughs> is it like <laughs> you know like <laughs> what does that mean what else does she say mm. hunt pulled his gaze from hers and fired one round with his eagle sharp vision he didn't need the scope to see the bullet pass through the hole she'd made when he lowered the gun, he found Bryce's cheeks flushed, her eyes warm whiskey, a quiet sort of light shone in them. He just stared at Bryce's stare. I see you, Quinlan. He silently conveyed to her, and I like all of it. 
right back at you. Her half smile seemed to say, was that, was I supposed to go, oh my God, oh my God. Cause really I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? I've been in this bed for hours. So it's March, whatever day, third or second or something. And it's 66 degrees. So that's why I got my legs all out. We're going on a stroll, are we handsome? Since I've been laying in bed all day, <laughs> reading during sprints. So I got to 50% in Crunch and City, and I'm just so underwhelmed. Like, yeah, okay, we've got like this serial killer possible demon on loose. Okay, I don't care about Bryce. Therefore, I didn't care about her and Danica's relationship to care about Bryce avenging her her death um rice and hunt have a negative chemistry they're icy even though all of a sudden after at the gun range now like they had an instant connection because she could shoot her bullet through the same hole and then he did it and it was like oh boners like what and that stuff and then of course her brother dan and yogurt over there so like, I'm, what? I don't care, this is whack. And there's only 50%. And then Monet said the next 50 to 70% gonna be a struggle. Like, like, oh, Nigel, where we going? 77%. I'm just ready to be done. I feel like somebody will be like, oh my God, it's getting so good. But that will require me to care about any of these people. And I don't, so I'm just like, mm-hmm. Next. Also, the makers of Pringles cans need to stop discriminating against adults. It's getting hard to get my hands up in here. Uh, I'm in 90%. I see the promised land. I see the finish line. It's so close. I don't know what part where this introduction will come in because I filmed different parts of this video, but we are here to talk about Crunchwrap City by Sarah Janet Mass, better known as Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood. Um, even though that's so tiny on the book, I'm not sure how we're supposed to know that's the title, but I digress. So the video that I put out, what seems like many moons ago now, in collaboration with other booktubers reading the last 10 years of Goodreads uh, Choice Award winners, House of whatever and whatever was one of them. And I had started it, but I didn't finish it by the time I put out my video. Now, House of Onion Breath, whatever the second one is, that blue one also was a winner. I'm not reading it. I'm not reading it, okay? No, no, I have suffered enough. Spoiler alert, I have suffered enough. So, um, yeah, this is about that first one, the red one. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna finish it. And so I was like, I'm gonna read it. And then my, li my library hold was due back soon. So I got motivated towards the end of the week. I listened to the audiobook um, and I followed along with the ebook, thank the Lord, because I was able to listen to it faster because um, once we get beyond like 2.5 normally I have to be um what do you call it double reading dual reading whatever the word is I have to be also reading along with my eyeballs to be able to process what the words are so that's what I did and then I was like okay three times speed and I could still understand while looking at the words because like I want this to be over and like just like oh why this book has so many let me tell you this book let me tell you the ratings of this book on Goodreads it's absurd I mean are we surprised no but on Goodreads this has 300 three wait three three hundred thousand seven wait 371 how can, why can't I read numbers? 371,512 ratings, so 44,312 reviews. 4.48 for this 803 page monstrosity. So Jessica, why are you, why, I mean, if you're new here, maybe you're shocked, like why are you in the minority? I'm going to tell you, uh, well, again, I don't know how this video is going to be edited because I have clips of my reading journey and now this day I'm speaking to you, I am finished. So I don't know if I'm now I'm gonna show you my reading journey or I, it's after my reading journey and I'm telling you that I finished the book. I don't know. So 803 pages. 
I need Sarah Janet and Bloomsbury to step up and to be punished for their crimes against humanity because this is getting out of hand. I know that she's your cash cow, but at least save some trees in the process. This is this is crazy. 800 pages for this? Now, okay, I have read Throne of Glass and I have read all the Akatar books thus far and uh, that's it, right? Yes. So I have overall enjoyed those. I have problems with certain books. Y'all know I didn't love A Court of Silver Flames, but overall enjoyed those. I see why she has mass appeal. <laughs> Sarah J, mass appeal, get it? Um, but I don't think they're like, oh my God. And I don't think her writing has gotten better. The books have just gotten longer um, and they're not edited. So there's that. Anyway, so reading this book, I already was like, I, since it has come out, have been like, ah, no, because it's very long and it sounded very similar to her other books. And I was like, mm, I don't think so. But I'm not going to lie that I've seen the cover and been tempted because it's pretty. The first one. I don't think the cover of the second one. And so I'm glad now that because of that project, that collaboration, I have now read this and that I I did um, spend a credit on the audiobook because it is an Audible exclusive. Ugh, whatever. Okay, so Croissant City by Sarah Janet is her adult debut, I guess, because well now in this now, Akatar has been re like they have republished new covers there. Um, so now it's adult, right? So but this one was intended adult from the beginning. And it's urban fantasy, but there's still fae. But there's fae, there's werewolves, there's vampires, there's demons, there's every supernatural creature you can think of. She dumped into this book. And some humans, I guess. And like, oh, and there's angels, like every single thing. And now some of you are like, oh, but it's for a reason. Da -da 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 -da. Shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. So I don't know what clips you've seen thus far of my experience of this book, but let's just go ahead and say it was not a pleasant one. Uh, and I have a lot of highlights in my Kindle uh, app here from reading it. And so I, I just don't know how to structure this because I feel like past the common knowledge just on the interwebs of things that happened, a lot of my issues are spoilery. So let me do my best real quick. Like since so many people have the read this book, I think a lot of you um, have either read it or don't care and don't care about spoilers. So I can, you know, speak freely. But for those of you who like still want to read it and don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to give you this little, I'm going to give you this. This is for you, okay? So think of every supernatural creature. Dump it in. Urban landscape. Dump it in. Um, A girl who loves to dance but can't dance anymore. Dump it in. A brooding male with wings. Dump it in. Um, pages and pages and pages and pages of male, female, male, female, female, male, male, female. Dump it in. Um, endless descriptions of things that don't build a good visual in your mind. Dump it in. Um, yeah, it just gives you this, you're like, Jessica, I'm not really getting anything. It's just kind of bland and I just have all these creatures standing around. Exactly. That, my friends, is Coyote Ugly City a mess of things just sh just shook it in there and here's this boring landscape like okay i just here's my problem with the book everything it's too long it is too similar to the other series and I know there's a reason but still it's too similar to the other series um like I said, I don't think her writing has improved. I still hate the use of like male and female. Um, I don't, I never got a good feeling for what the setting was. Like, you know, in like Throne of Glass, those are very descriptive places. And in Akatar, like you can see these different courts and everything. And this one, it was just like, insert bland cityscape. And that is Cr Chris, whatever, Crunchwrap City. And I'm just like, okay. 
all of the freaking creatures way too many and in the beginning of the book it goes through like there's four houses there's house of earth and blood house of sky and breath house of something something house of something something and it has all the different uh creatures or whatever that belong to the houses beyond that i don't know what the point of the houses is like they're mentioned but i still don't understand like is it just like they belong to the house and that's it like and you like a house can claim you i just didn't f i guess this book being house of thingy thingy is because we're following Bryce who's a member of House of Thingy Thingy so I guess that's it I just am like why we have all this in the beginning all these houses and stuff and it just doesn't seem like it has that big of an impact in the story also um you know I feel like of course this is Sarah Janica so you know there's a romance but I would have been more invested in this story had it been a romance not a romance not a romance not a romance had there been um the story had been focused on Bryce and her brother and their like, you know, shaky relationship with their dad. Like I would have loved a more a familial story. I think the setting still a mess, but that would have been more interesting than this like brooding whatever. And outside of this like romance, and I say that because I felt nothing, <laughs> nothing. Um, there's this murder mystery. I think it's it's revealed on the back of the book most people know but uh someone close to Bryce is killed or a lot of people's a lot of persons well they're not even persons a lot of creatures I don't know personas close to Bryce are murdered and then it's kind of like a murder mystery because then more people are getting killed it's like oh who's doing it and so while we got to the end and who was in charge I was like oh okay I didn't see that person um but it makes sense I didn't care because I was invested in nobody except this like <coughs> really tiny side character um, that is like works with friends with Bryce, Bryce is our main character. I felt nothing for Bryce. She feels like a bland white girl. Okay, like I think she has red hair. That's about all I know about her. And then she loves to dance, but she can't dance anymore. Huh, don't care. Also, every time I read the word hunt, I thought of hunts like tomato sauce. Uh, so that's where mine went. The names in this book are so bad. I'm like, hunt Athalar. Just terrible. Um, didn't care one goddamn thing about him or his backstory. I just was like, all right. Then we have Rune Dannon, which made me think of Dannon Yogurt. And here's my thing about Rune. Rune could have been interesting. Um, when he came on the page was more interesting than Hunt Tomato Sauce, but I still wasn't given enough. And again, I wish the story would have focused on him and Bryce's relationship as brother, sister, and with their daddy and those problems because I love me some family drama, but it didn't. So Rune Dannon, also terrible name. Ah, ah, ah. Then we had, those are like the main people, right? Because there's some other people like some angels and then a werewolf mama and all this stuff and like but those are like the three main people right yeah yeah and like the little sidekicks and I'm like I don't care so anytime things would happen I was like okay all right next chapter I don't care move it on let's get to the story like oh my god this nothing really started happening like things happened as this book is moseying along. But nothing really is popping until like 80%, 85%. And that is wild out of 800 pages. Okay, I wanna go through some of these things I have saved in my phone. One thing, uh, hell is mentioned a lot in this book, but not H-E double hockey stick, just one hockey stick, H-E-L. Why? Y H E L like let's just let's just say that um also when uh Hunt is described he's always described as like golden brown brown skin tan brown skin I'm like this is a white man yes so we've moved away from olive now he's golden brown That's a white man. Um, also, Sarah's use of the word alpha hole, like in the book. I think it's only mentioned 21 times, which is still 21 too many in this book because that's something that like readers refer to alpha males in books 
And like, I've never seen it as the character referring to the man, to his face as an alpha hole. I guess you could call that, what's it called? What's that thing called when it's, you know, you like, I can't think of the word. Meta, maybe, maybe you could call it meta, but hate it. Let's not do that. Okay, and then we got, also let's see when we're talking about dance, because Bryce loves to dance. Been here at least 59 times, because if y'all didn't know, Bryce loves to dance, but she didn't have the body for it. And dancing made her happy. She doesn't want to be happy anymore. Spare me. Okay, and then I'm so sorry, but before I get into spoilers, the last thing I want to say is the true. I'm going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna save you the time for reading this book. Okay, the true message of this book is live, laugh, love, and dance. That's really it. I'm. 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 I'm for real. And if, if you're curious why, you can stay and listen to the spoilery part. But that is the message of this book. Live, laugh, love. And dance. Okay, that's it. I have to go into spoilers now. So now I am all for friendships, very close friendships, and people telling each other that they love each other. But this book was absurd, okay? And I will get to that point. But one of the biggest issues I had with this book was I was like, I felt the moments where I was like, oh, I'm supposed to care, or I should be like, ooh, swoon over this relationship between Hunt and Bryce, and I never cared. And the entire time, my face was this emoji. this I was like is this chapter over some of those chapters were really long now I've already talked about my problem with H-E-L and I've talked about alpha hole because I don't ever want to see that on page ever again and let me tell you why Bryce can't dance anymore so Bryce wanted to be in the ballet but she didn't have the right body for it because of course she's this perfectly slender but yet curvaceous woman who has big boobs and a big booty but of course she has a small waist because you know those exist everywhere, especially in fantasy worlds written by Sarah Janet. Um, so they, you know, they told her she had too much body, body, body to be in the ballet. And so she stopped dancing. Um, and then she used to dance for fun, but her BFF, Danica, very close to Danon, still making me think of yogurt. Um, they, do they dance together or something? Anyway, we're in the spoilers so Danica gets murdered in the first I don't know 10 15 percent of the book her and her pack because she's a wolf uh werewolf wolf whatever so gets murdered and dancing reminds her of Danica so she doesn't dance anymore because she doesn't want to be happy and we just get that all the time let's let's see let's talk about let's let's dance once she might have gone right to the dance studio, would have danced and moved until the world made sense again. It had always been her haven, her way of puzzling out the world. She'd gone to the studio whenever she'd had a shit day. Ooh. It had been two years since she set foot in one. She'd thrown on all her dance clothes and shoes, her bags. The one at the apartment had all been splattered with blood anyway. Danica's, Connors, and Thorns on the clothes in the bedroom and Zelda's and Bronze's on her secondary bag, which had just left hanging beside the door. Blood patterns, like. I mean, I guess you're like, Jessica, her best friend was murdered. Of course she's gonna be dramatic. Spare me, spare me. It's just like, um, let's. And then what else is here? Even being told over and over that she had the wrong body type hadn't stopped her from loving to dance. Hadn't stopped that heady rush seeing a dance performed live or her taking amateur classes after work or her following CCB's dancers the way Connor, Ethan, and Thorne followed sports team. Nothing could ever stop her from craving that soaring sensation she found when she was dancing, whether in class or at a club or even on the God's damn street. That's another thing I hated. Gods. Not goddamn. Gods damned hate it but see ain't nothing gonna stop her passion for dance 
Um, Bryce cleared the alley, careening onto bustling Central Avenue, the street full of fleeing people and honking cars. She left, she leapt over their hoods, scaling them one after another, every movement as smooth as one of her dance steps. Leap, twirl, arch. Her body did not fail her, not as she followed the creature's rotting sense to another alley. Another, another. So basically, dance is life. We get it hated it um also so the relationship between her and Danica I could not I didn't care because I didn't feel like either of them was that well fleshed out as a character in the beginning before Danica died for me to care that much that she died like I was like okay well that's unfortunate but I don't really have that many emotions between her and the wolves and just I just feel like Bryce is so bland there's just like nothing really amazing about her she's half fae she has daddy issues and issues with her brother big whoop and then you have Hunt this old old ass angel because of course he has to be an old immortal man he can never be a younger immortal man whatever and his issues and he's a slave and he has to do all these things these kills to like you know try to get free great I don't care um the the, I feel like this should have just been a fantasy because the urban setting was really fucking with me because they have angels. So Hunt has wings. He's flapping his ass to the top of a fucking building, but he's got his phone. So he's doing, he's like flapping. He's flying to the top of a building with his phone like this. Like that was one of the descriptions. And I was like, I can't, I cannot deal with this. Them talking about all of these things with all of these freaking supernatural beings going on. They're like, oh, let me FaceTime them real quick. I'm like, and just like I know urban fantasy but it just does not work for me not in my brain since I've read so many of her other things with Faye in them I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> I cannot compute that we're here on a, on cell phones I can't and I know I've known from the start if you read all Throne of Glass and um does it happen to Throne of Glass or Akatar whatever spoiler if you have not read those but I already knew there was going to be this crossover thing in one of those books was the Kingdom of Ash and so that part where that people are so shocked at at the end of the second Crescent City book, I'm like, mm, that is not surprising to me, especially reading this one. I was like, yeah, this is just making me think of Throne of Glass, like, because all all the different, you know, the things that were open to different worlds and stuff. And so I already if I had not already known that spoiler for the end of Second Crescent City, I would not be surprised. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, that adds up. And so I just don't think that Sarah Janet is this mastermind. She has come after other people who have done these universes or megaverses or whatever. This is not new. We obviously have the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then Brandon Sanderson himself has said he was inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe to create his Cosmere. And here is Sarah Janet coming after that. So let's not be, let's not play games. Like she's so original. Great that she made notes along the thing to put these all together. But I don't find that impressive because these stories are very similar between Throne of Glass, Akatar, and Crescent City there is not a lot of originality I will say Throne of Glass and Akatar really have um their kind of own stories but then as the books get later I just feel like there's things where it's like okay this is kind of just a copy of this person and this is kind of just a copy of this person and Crescent City is just a third in copying it's not that original so I don't give her that much credit that she's just oh my god amazing storyteller plotting all these things this whole time she has been able to watch other people do it and so it was like, oh, okay, she still had time, however many books in the Throne of Glass, to be like, ooh, well, I can just add this here, and then whatever little portal I want to open in another book, bam. Okay, had she not been this little successful white woman, all of these other books after Throne of Glass wouldn't even be here. So I'm sorry, I just don't give her that much credit to be like, oh my god, it's so amazing what she has done. Whatever okay whatever and it's not amazing because her writing is still t is not good I think her writing was better in the beginning her writing is not good and her books just keep getting longer and it's absurd it's absurd and so I don't really have a lot to say about this book because it was boring it was 800 pages of boredom I did not care about the characters I never got a good grip for the setting the story beyond finding the killer for Danica did not care there was about a horn I'm looking for that and again I just kept seeing so many parallels and reminders to her other books that I just was like okay I don't care because I know that Sarah J Mass does not kill people 
not like her main characters and there's I know there's gonna be a solution I know her and Hunt are gonna be together so that whole stunt with Hunt being given to the other person um the uh to still be in slavery whatever and then Bryce's dumbass tries to come and trade her life for his blah 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 I was like okay well I knew this is gonna be solved I know they're not gonna die not definitely a not book one if ever because Sarah J Mass does not know how to use stakes correctly so there was never a moment of me worrying about them too it was just when and will it's not when is like is this gonna happen because I knew it was um the stuff with her and her brother anytime the autumn king was brought up I'm sorry I'm thinking of throwing glass <laughs> I'm thinking of throwing glass when we're talking about the autumn king and obviously there's like whatever and portal and this is the word I don't care I do not care I'm not reading past that because this is not this is not original enough on its own for me I think I just think it's lazy and I think it's insane that she just gets to profit so much off of her laziness and people are like oh my god it's so amazing I'm like it's not though it's really not and with the whole thing of the horn being in her tattoo and wait love conquers all I was like I'm gonna throw up in my mouth and this, that's why this story is really about live laugh love because what is it love conquers all through love all is possible I'm sorry um in any other case not any other case um in many other cases I would be like oh that's so beautiful in this I was like are we fucking kidding are we really is this really what we're doing here and I have this quote that's from the end um that <laughs> I just is literally to live laugh love so Danica grabbed her hand again that's point of it Bryce of life to live to love you might as well sing to laugh but they didn't put that here so she said to live to love knowing that it might all vanish tomorrow it makes everything that much more precious she should have just said to live to laugh to love literally the point of this book is through love all is possible live love love that's the point of this book and now I want to know how many of you went and got something like that tattooed along your spine trying to be like Bryce. Because if you did, mm, well, lastly, since it's already at 28 minutes and I'm very hot in this sweatshirt, I want to go over the non-existent flames in Bryce and Hunt's relationship. Okay, well now I can't find it. But anyway, they're at the gun range and Bryce shoots like three times and the, it goes like through the same hole and he's just like, and then he goes up and he like looks at her and he looks away and shoots it through the same hole and it's like <gasps> oh there their walls melt down oh my god and I was like was that supposed to was I supposed to be wooed how was I supposed to be wooed to this alpha home like there and then then there's things like he's in the shower after having to cure, kill somebody and she like basically like helps him shower or whatever even though she's like I'll leave the bar the bottom part to you I don't know if he was supposed to wash the bottom part before she came in there because then he get out of the shower so I'm like so did he not wash his naughty bits in his booty because that's nasty but it tracks it also tracks oh it just Everything in this book was so dramatic. I'm looking at my notes and she tells her brother that he's dead to her, but she takes her phone and said she swiped her finger. Like he's looking at her phone like he's a contact and swiped and said and deletes his contact and said, you are dead to me. Oh my God. Is this like, is this supposed to be the Faye, uh, like a Faye telenovela because it's just so over the top. But it's just stuff like she leaned into the shadow of his wings and could have sworn he folded it more closely around her. I'm sorry. Sorry. For some reason that just makes me uncomfortable when I think about wings and maybe because I don't like I don't like the flutter of wings like I don't like butterflies being close to me I don't like birds and I the flutter of wings makes me think of flying cockroaches sorry I'm from South Carolina I have trauma oh so the thought of a wing folding onto you made me I was like I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it I can go on for days on how underwhelmed <laughs> I was about this book, about this relationship, about this story, about this writing, about this crossover, about these nuggets, um, or what do you call them? Not nuggets, special, special nuggets, special drops, special, whatever. I can't think of what the word is. Gemstones, nugget stones, what's it called? 
I don't know. You know, when there's something, something secret in a book, I thought this was terrible. I think this is worse than uh, A Court of Silver Flames. Like I would prefer to read A Court of Silver Flames 10 times over than have to read this long, boring bullshit again. I am not reading the second one because of what I've heard about it. And I could just already tell you that it's just gonna set shit up and people are not gonna be in danger and all this bullshit bullshit so i'm just not gonna waste my time um i y'all can have this you know if you're enjoying it okay i mean i don't know where you're smoking but i guess i'm happy for you or whatever but i'm done i know that through love all is possible and so i guess i've received the message from the book so i'm going to go live laugh love my ass into a iced coffee and um i will see y'all later but let me know your thoughts on this book um about the alpha holes in this book and if you really think bryce was a good dancer i really don't know i feel like i'm missing something but i could just go on and on because this book is stupid like he lying in bed specially shaped fey headphones over his arched ears sarah you don't shut the hell up i i i i hate it <laughs> okay i gotta go um but thank you for watching this video thank you to today's sponsor check all that information out in the description below give this video a thumbs up like subscribe wait that means y'all know what it means stay blessed hydrated moisturized and sunscreen i'll see you in my next one bye